Now we are getting back to Inugami. Second to last of our hit list missions. Take it away, wolf boy. I will taste suffering this night. Uh, and we're going on to a new hit target because the so previous ones are all dead. Hope to hell, mate. This is Jean-Luc Lambert oh, and oh, Emilia man. Dubois are in charge of an old dockyard that the Brotherhood now uses as storage. Their primary objective being the storage and transport of old relics between various Brotherhood facilities. It's an interesting setup at least. The characters are kind of boring. And we won't be meeting them this time. We'll be doing very little this time. This is the most bare bones mission yet, so uh... I've changed the difficulty to Dawn, the highest difficulty, because of what it says on the bottom. When you're in Dawn difficulty, certain enemies are infused with Dark Essence, which causes them to be more dangerous. These docks need to be cleared of any Brotherhood forces. I'm counting on you. <laughs> I am counting the dead. Dark Essence enemies glow red, give you a whole bunch more essence when you kill them. And they're more dangerous and harder to kill. So we're going to need longer swarm, more targets for the swarm, and more damage for the swarm. And more damage for the Kusanagi. But we can't afford the faster reload for the swarm just yet. So I'm gonna return to that upgrade point later on. There's only one per level in all Vendetta's missions. But this entire mission consists of this room that we're in now. So it'll be pretty easy to get back to the Talon Shrine. Because we have no reason to go any further than where we're standing at this moment. Like I said, the most bare bones mission yet. I had a seven minute cut of this very video. If I had played this on the lowest difficulty, and uh, come in with full upgrades instead of doing the upgrades in mission. I probably could have gotten this down under five minutes. Not to say it isn't fun, but it is intensely pointless. But I've intentionally drawn it out a little bit so that I could talk about the big uh, mid-volume one event of the Darkness comics that wraps up all the plot lines that have been left hanging up to that point. That, by the way, is our Dark Essence enemy. He didn't do jack shit. And he gave us 90 uh, Essence for killing him. It's a multiplier on whatever points you would have gotten. So... It's pretty lucky if they are unarmored guys. If it were this guy who were uh, upgraded, we might have been in trouble. We'll see a few more later on. Brotherhood reinforcements on the way. You know what to do. Reinforcements coming. We're gonna buy that last upgrade. Then we're gonna fight them for a long time. And I took a death along the way, and I kept it in because I needed the time. So this big event that I'm talking about starts off with Jackie getting shot. He doesn't know why or who shot him. He calls his uncle, but a voice answers the phone, which is his own voice. And it hangs up on him. So Jackie has to get to the bottom of that mystery, and luckily Capri's just shows up and tells him your uncle is in uh, Las Vegas in a casino called Golden Fleece, so go there. So Jackie, Wenders, and a doctor they kidnap go on a cross-country road trip. Now, a funny thing to note about the comics that I haven't mentioned yet is they are not allowed to print profanity. They can show some of the most horrible violence I've ever seen, and any sex act that doesn't show any female presenting nipples, but swears, that's just too much. So people still swear, it just turns into Cuban speak, but for some reason, Uncle Frankie instead says stuff like, 
who the frick is that? Or, cheese whiz Mary and Joseph. He does like silly non-swears. And so just keep that in mind that he's saying that sort of shit while uh, all sorts of crazy crap is happening to him. So Uncle Frankie, this mysterious clone of Jackie, and Apollonia, who is still catatonic and has to be brought around in a wheelchair, have all gone to this under construction casino to, I guess, set up some business and claim their stake. It turns out, though, that this has all been a setup by the Angelus, who now inhabits the body of Lauren Franchetti, Uncle Frankie's wife. She has summoned herself a homunculus, because that's an established power of the Angelus. And it looks like a sort of hulking humanoid monstrosity, all spiky and shit. But it has the horribly mangled after torture face of her former lover that Frankie tortured to death. Just for optimum horror effect. Here's my one death, by the way. Let's see what the darkness has to say about it. Pathetic mortal sound! Yep. Anyway, uh, the Angelus and this monster she has made, they easily overpower Frankie, put a ball gag in his mouth, and tie him to a uh, girder. So he's dangling from the ceiling. They do shit like tear his heart out, but oh, it turns out it's an illusion. All just to scare him even more. And Apollonia is in attendance in a wheelchair. I think Lauren is uh, trying to get revenge for the both of them. No. And just to pay a little bit of attention to the gameplay real quick. With all of our upgrades, we can pretty much hit everybody on screen with the swarm. There'll be one hit kill with the Kusanagi once they're swarmed. And all the hearts that they produce recharge the swarm such that it is basically usable again immediately after it ends. So we can chain together a whole bunch of swarms that make it very easy to kill everybody in attendance. It's pretty cool. So eventually Jackie shows up to save his uncle from torture. And the Angelus, of course, is waiting for him. She engulfs him in flames and magical lights and all the powers that she has that are specifically designed to defeat the darkness. And Jackie just stands there and takes it. He's completely unaffected. So he goes to counterattack her in her weakened state and take her out once and for all. When Apollonia jumps out of her wheelchair, riddles him with bullets. Turns out she had not been catatonic at all. She had been faking it ever since the incident with the Spear of Destiny. The bed that it was hidden in was later used to transport her in the hospital while she was being treated. And it cured her immediately. She doesn't even really understand why that happened. She doesn't even know what it is. She just calls it the Shard of something or other. And that's the last we see of the Spear of Destiny in Volume 1, although it does have a much bigger part in later volumes. This is her big revenge plan, and Jackie falls down dead. But it turns out that was the clone Jackie, who is in fact Sonatine from the Brotherhood of the Darkness. He has the ability to transform into other people, I guess. And he was going to defeat the Angelus and take the darkness somehow. But Apollonia fucked that all up. And while Sonatine is laying dying in the corner, Wenders and the real Jackie show up. And Wenders runs to his former master, who he's apparently still loyal to, even though he's betrayed him multiple times at this point, and tries to comfort him as he's dying. But Sonatine gives him a deep French kiss which transfers his soul into Wender's still perfectly healthy body and Wender's into his dying body. Just then, Jackie is impaled from behind by the homunculus that the Angela summoned. He gets the Darklings to pull the sword out and apparently they don't show it, but the sword strikes the Angelus, just wounds her, 
and she freaks out about her holy sword being uh, cursed by her blood somehow. And then she explodes, and destroys the entire casino. That's the end. Uh, Jackie celebrates with Wenders, who is now Sonatine secretly, but no one else knows it. And they say the Angelus is dead, but uh, the Angelus in Lauren's body does appear in a later volume. And Apollonia has accomplished nothing, but she has also disappeared with the Angelus. I need more souls. More! Guess that's enough wild shit for one episode. Story time. Oh, are you there? Sorry, sorry. I Listen, as soon as you guys find some answers down there, I want you to check in with me. Got it? Okay, good, bye. There are many wicked souls here. My blade thanks you, as do I. You bet, sunshine. Hey, uh, I, I don't mean to pry, but, uh, who am I kidding? I totally mean to pry. But I, I gotta ask you, is that blade of yours? It's the Kusanagi blade, right? You know of its history? I know stuff about Dark Essence, the, the darkness, and all that weird shit. I'm real fun at parties. You are a strange little man. I get that a lot. Please don't kill me. You know of my blade. You have my respect. It belonged to the first emperors of Japan. It was a symbol of peace and prosperity. But I thought it was lost. It was. Until the blade fell into evil hands. It was used in the death of a thousand innocent souls. Which is why the bearer of the sword is cursed to redeem the sword by killing a thousand souls of the wicked. Hmm? <laughs> and tonight, the blade will feast. <laughs> but not on me, right? Y you said I have your respect. Hello? Mr. Unigami? Right, sorry. Uh, call me when you've found anything about the dark essence down there. Hello, uh, Mr. Inugami, sir. Uh, so I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, have you had any luck finding that source of dark essence? We are closer. Hmm. I can feel it in my bones. Good. I mean, bad for your bones, but good for us. Hey, so, uh, uh that, that blade of yours, I've just, I've just been wondering, uh, 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 what happens if you miss a day of feeding it? Every day I do not take a wicked soul from this earth. A year of my life is removed. Fuck me. How many days you missed since you started? I have missed 17 days of feeding since I first picked up the blade. That is why I must find wicked souls today. You know I'm nuts, but I I'm a good guy at heart, right? I I'm an old soul, not a wicked one. You know what I'm saying? Why do I talk so much? Let me know when you find the source of the dark essence, alright? 